Hurricane Dorian still essentially just parked near the Bahamas. It has drifted north slightly over the last 24 hours, but still just punishing Grand Bahama Island here. The eye of the storm you see shrinking, not becoming as apparent towards the end of the loop, which indicates the storm is becoming less organized, potentially weaker, because it's been parked in place for so long, the turbulence of this very powerful storm has really just torn apart the top layer of the ocean, and colder water rises up from underneath to replace that water has been displaced, and warm water is the fuel for these storms. So it's basically exhausting its own supply of fuel. As long as it's still parked in place, it's going to continue to weaken. The problem is, once it starts tracking to the north, it's going to go over the waters of the Gulf Stream. So I can see a scenario where this storm weakens below Category 3 strength for a short time this morning, but then re-strengthens to that Category 3 major hurricane status as it tracks up the coast. Stationary right now, still technically has 120 mile an hour sustained winds, but again, the satellite presentation does indicate the storm is weakening a bit. Restrengthens as it moves up the coast. Still a Category 3 storm by tomorrow afternoon. It's not much progress over the next 36 hours, but at least it's some progress to get it away from the Bahamas. And then it starts to pick up speed as it runs along the coast of South Carolina and North Carolina just offshore from Wilmington and then making landfall in the Outer Banks as a Category 2 storm by late Thursday night into early Friday morning. But that cone of uncertainty still includes the possibility it turns farther out into the Atlantic. We'll hope for that. That would minimize the impacts in central North Carolina and reduce the impacts along the coast. If it tracks farther inland, right along the coast even, that would spread out the impact map across more of central North Carolina. So when we talked about impacts, we mean both the potential for damaging winds and the potential for too much rain. Let's talk about the wind threat first. The wind field with this storm by tomorrow afternoon is going to be centered near that center of circulation just off the coast of Jacksonville. As it tracks to the north, we're going to freeze the map as that wind field starts to impact central North Carolina and the coast of North Carolina by Thursday afternoon. Could get some tropical storm force wind gusts in our southern counties from the Sand Hills to the southern coastal plain by Thursday afternoon with gale force winds in the orange shaded area. Think of basically severe thunderstorm force winds getting into the Wilmington area by Thursday afternoon. The hurricane force winds just offshore. You can see the yellow shaded area strong enough for sporadic power outages but probably not widespread. Get close to the triangle. Basically it's along and east of I-95 where you have that greatest threat of those tropical storms storm force winds may be resulting in some power outages. But the greater threat for us is going to be from too much rain, and we're going to be right in the dividing line of that. Just the pattern shows you that. Hardly any to our west and northwest, a ton closer to the coast. Let's zoom in closer and put some numbers on the map here. We're talking less than an inch along and west of I-85, but along and east of I-95, the potential for four to six inches of rain. And in between, in the triangle, we're talking about an inch or two of rainfall in all likelihood, but a little change to that forecast pattern could spread the heavier rain much farther inland as the storm interacts with land. It loses some of its organization and the rain really spreads out. So this could still go either way. Make sure you're staying plugged into the forecast for any potential seemingly minor change. That forecast pattern could result in a major change to what we actually experience here in central North Carolina. But the greatest impact is likely to be along and east of I-95 for our counties in central North Carolina. Extreme impact along the coast with the heaviest rain, the storm surge, the beach erosion, the wind damage associated with Hurricane Dorian as it tracks very close to the coast. We'll keep you updated on that. Another update from the National Hurricane Center comes out at 8 o'clock, and we'll have that during CBS this morning.